Hey, you guys. Uh, first thing I want to say is we made the movie here in Dallas, in, in the Real Effect Studios near Deep Ellum. So I urge you guys, if you haven't seen it, go see it. And if you didn't like it, I will personally give you your money back. That's the, the Gutierrez guarantee. So I'm going to tell you guys about the Book of Life. And in order for me to tell you about the movie, I kind of have to tell you about uh, my life. So I'm originally from Mexico City. Uh, when I was nine years old, uh, my father decided that Mexico City was not safe and it was too much crime. And so he decided to move us to Tijuana, which was a, a town uh, right next to San Diego, which is super crime filled. Uh, he, didn't, he, he, he thought, you know, in order for my family to be better, uh, I, I want you guys to learn English and I want you guys to learn both languages. So I started going to school in San Diego and I lived in Mexico, so I would cross the border every day. And I was a, a very proud, uh, mediocre student. I was really, really, I was like, I thought C, a C student, I thought C was cool. That's, that's how I could sort of talk myself into it. And I loved to draw. So I always drew and I always uh, wrote stories. And I didn't think I could make a living doing that stuff. I, I, I sort of thought you had to get a real job in order to make a living. And that, and that was kind of a fantasy. So uh, I found out about this, this college that was an animation school in Los Angeles. And so I tried really hard. I said, well, if, 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 if I want to tell stories and I want to draw and I want to be a film director because I love movies, maybe animation is what I want to do. And so I found out as much as I could about animation. I found out about the school. And so I go to the school and I bring all my drawings and all these things that I thought you needed to be an animator. And I also brought all my paintings. And so all my paintings were about Mexican wrestling and Day of the Dead and all the things I loved about Mexico. All my drawings were all the stuff I was seeing in TV. So this is, you know, I'm a, I'm a kid of, of the 80s. So I was drawing Mr. T and aliens and, and monsters and girls in bikinis, sort of the things that a, a teenager draws, right? So I go to this school and I, I have both of my portfolios. Uh, and I go to the animation school, and it's really hard to get into that school. It's called uh, CalArts. And so I get in this line, and there's an there's a animation legend, which I didn't know at the time. His name was Jules Engel, and he's reviewing everybody's portfolios. So I walk up with my portfolio, and he opens my drawing portfolio. And, and he was uh, Hungarian, so he had a really thick accent. And so he, he opened it, and he looked at me, and he looked at the drawings. He looked back at me, and he goes, this is crap. And he flips the page, and he goes, this is crap. And he goes, this is crappier. And he flips and he keeps, and just crap, crap, crap. And the more he said that, the more my heart got smaller and smaller and started breaking. And by the end of it, he grabs what I thought was my best drawing and he goes, you think this is funny? And I go, yeah, not funny at all. And he puts it down, he closes it. And he said words that stayed with me forever. He said, this is you copying what you like. That tells me nothing, nothing about who you are, nothing about who you are on the inside. You have no voice as an artist. You should not be an artist. This is a copy machine. And so he hands back my portfolio, and I was devastated. I grabbed my stuff, and I you know, walked away really sad. But I left my painting portfolio on the table by accident, truly an accident. Jules goes, hey, 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 sad guy, come back. You, you forgot your, uh, your painting thing. And so he opens that portfolio, and his eyes lit up. And he goes, beautiful, magic, beautiful, beautiful. And he goes, if you can make this move, and if you can put this up on the screen, then you will be doing something I've never seen before. This is who you are. This is your voice. This is who you really are. That's a fantasy. This is who you really are. You can make fantasies out of this, but this is your soul. So I'm going to let you into the school if you promise me to do this stuff. And so that's how I got into the school. And I started working really, really hard. And I was not the most talented student in the school. But I said, that's OK. You know, it, it, that's the way the world is. But I will be the hardest working student. And so I killed myself. I worked so hard. Eventually, I finished uh, uh, my career over there. As, as a, I got a bachelor's and a master's in animation. I got all these scholarships. It was awesome. And so I finished this little short. Uh, and it won all these awards. And you know, won a student Emmy. And so I said, I want to I wanna go out into the world and portray my culture. And so I went out there, and everywhere I went, they said, no, no one's interested in this subject matter. No one's interested in uh, Latino content. There's no audience for all this. Eventually, 
uh, a company, Sony, said, you know what, we'll buy one of your little cartoons. And so I've always written about my life, right? All the experiences I live, that's my biggest inspiration. So my first cartoon was called El Macho, and it was for the internet, and it was about a little orphan who was dropped off at an orphanage wearing a wrestling mask. And no one adopted him because he wouldn't take the mask off. And so he became this giant wrestler who protects the orphanage and fights for the kids. So if you break that down, that was my story, right? I was a kid dropped into the US. The mask is basically my culture. I'm not, I don't want to give it up. And so no one wanted me. So I'm going to grow up to raise the little uh, Mexican orphans and, and, and help them. So that became my, my first cartoon. And it did pretty well. After that, uh, I kept pitching TV shows. Eventually, I pitched a show with my wife, Sandra Kiwa, called El Tigre for Nickelodeon. Uh, and that show got picked up. And so you know, people say, well, what's El Tigre about? El Tigre is about a boy who loves his grandfather and loves his father. His dad is a superhero. His grandpa's a supervillain. And he's got to figure out what he wants to do, be good or evil, right? So take that back, break it down to my life. Uh, when I was growing up, my dad was an architect, so he, he was an artist, and I would go visit him in his office, and I would say, hey, dad, can you, can you draw me a dinosaur? And he would be, you know, working on the house, turn around, draw me a perfect dinosaur, and go back to drawing the house. So I thought he had superpowers, and I thought he was a superhero, because he was an artist, because he could draw. And then my grandfather, on the other hand, he was in the Mexican military. So whenever I would go to his office, the carpet was red, you know, it was really dark. He was always on the phone, really hushed over. You know, he had knives and guns everywhere. So I thought he was a supervillain. So my aunts would grab my giant cheeks as a kid and go, Jorjito, you're so much like your dad, and you're so much like your grandfather. What are you going to do when you grow up? An artist or going to the military? So that's what uh, El Tigre came from. So after that, El Tigre did pretty good. It won a bunch of Emmys. It did, it did, it did pretty good. It opened all these doors. And then I said, well, now I want to do a movie, right? I did a web show, we did a TV show, now I want to make a movie. And so I pitched Book of Life to every studio, and every studio slammed the door on my face and said pretty much the same thing as before. No one wants to see this stuff. There's no interest in the subject matter. There's no audience for this. I mean, it got to the point where people would slam the door, and I could, I could recognize the wood. I would go, oh, that's, ah, that's, a, that's oak. That's, that's, that's a good door. Uh, <laughs> So eventually, uh, a studio here in Texas, here in Dallas, called Real Effects, uh, a producer named Brad Booker, brought me in and he said, hey, you know you did that movie? We're a young studio, we want to take a chance. And so we went for it. We started uh, working on the movie. I moved from LA to Texas. Uh, and then Guillermo del Toro got involved as a producer. Uh, he is, as you, I don't know if you guys know, but he's a huge, huge movie director. And he shepherds young up and coming directors. I'm not that young, but he still shepherded me. And he took me under his wing. Uh, and as he put it, I reminded him of him many pounds ago. So I, I'm, I'm on my way to, to be like Yerbo. So we, we made the movie. And you know you, we had to convince everybody, every actor, every band, every, everybody who worked on this movie, we had to convince. Uh, 20th Century Fox, the studio got behind the movie. They saw that we were doing something so different and so I mean, our, our movie doesn't look like stuff out there, doesn't sound like stuff out there. And the subject matter in the beginning, people were just so weirded out. They were like, a Day of the Dead movie for little kids? They thought it was a zombie movie or they thought it was a horror movie. So it took a long, long time. I mean, it took me 14 years to get this thing uh, up in the air. But it, it all came from, literally, I was a kid who had a dream. And my dream was really big, but I broke it down and I said, well, what are the steps? How do I get there? I know it's not going to happen tomorrow, and I know it's not going to happen in five years, but maybe in 10. And so you, you plan ahead, and you break stuff down, and you go, I admire that guy. How did he get there? So I, that's what I did. I would study directors, and I would study creators, and I'd go, OK, so before they did that, they did this, then they did this, and then eventually they, they're here. right? They start where I start. And so I really encourage you guys, if you have a dream, Look at people who are doing the things you want to do and break it down. And The Book of Life is not only a dead movie, it's a movie about family, it's a movie about a lot of things, but the biggest lesson in The Book of Life is this. The, the belief in the film is that there's a book with everyone's story. And this book, uh, some people are living the lives that others wrote for them. Their families, their cultures, they basically wrote what their life is supposed to be. 
What we say in the film is, break that. You write your own story. Don't let anybody else write your story. Because in the end, you're the author, right? When your life is done, you want to be able to turn that book in and people read your life. And that's what Day of the Dead is. You're remembering people's lives. And so I encourage you guys, do not let anyone write your story. Write your own story. Thank you.